What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Primetime Sports Podcast, hosted by Joey Mailari. So today's episode is going to be about the two trade situations going on around James Harden, and then the situation going on with the Portland Trailblazers and Damian Lillard. Going to give a quick synopsis and update of what's going on in both situations, and then add in a few new trade packages that I've put together over the last few minutes that I think could potentially work, especially considering... Both franchises, the Philadelphia 76ers and Portland Trailblazers, are going to wait until they get something back that they like. Neither team's going to rush the trade. They're going to make sure they get equal value back. And for the Portland Trailblazers, they, they want young talent to build around, more draft picks to build around for the future since they're rebuilding. And then on the other side is the complete reverse. The Philadelphia 76ers still want to build around Joel Embiid and obviously try to keep Tyrese Maxey as well. They're still trying to win an NBA Finals and give Joel Embiid the best supporting cast. So you have two teams the Trailblazers looking to rebuild and add future young assets. And then you have the Philadelphia 76ers looking to trade for current talent to help them compete now in the Eastern Conference. So over the last couple of days, a lot of reports have been coming out about the Damian Lillard situation. One of them being that Damian Lillard will not play for any other team but the Miami Heat. That's the only place he wants to go. The Miami Heat know that. But ultimately, Miami has not been able to put together a trade package that Portland is a fan of. Maybe they're not a big fan of, of Tyler Harrow in Portland. Maybe they want more than that in return. And in that case, there would have to be a three-team trade to make the two sides agree. So I'm going to give you guys an update on that situation. And then I'm going to give you an update on the James Harden situation. So for the Damian Lewis situation... There have been a flurry of teams looking to try to trade for Damian Lillard. A lot of teams are shopping and just asking what the asking price is to that Portland Trailblazers front office. And one interesting team that has come up in conversations that I want to talk about is the Utah Jazz. I know a lot of people are talking about the Miami Heat being a potential destination for Damian Lillard and the Philadelphia 76ers even, and even the Boston Celtics now with Jason Tatum trying to recruit Damian Lillard over the last couple days. I don't see Damian Lillard going to Boston, especially considering Boston would have to trade Jalen Brown. I don't think they want to do so. You have to trade Jalen Brown to get Damian Lillard. You're not going to get him otherwise. Even if it's a package of Robert Williams and Malcolm Brogdon and draft picks, I still think you have to give more talent to that Portland Trailblazers team. So don't think Damian Lillard will go to the Celtics. I think Miami is the best destination for him. I don't think the Sixers are going to happen since the Sixers want to hold on to Tyrese Maxey. Since he's still very young, hasn't been paid yet, and is still on a very efficient team-friendly contract, I don't think he'll be moved in a deal for Damian Lillard. So if you look at it, you have the Miami Heat as the most likely trade destination, and then you have some other teams that are interested, that are looking around the league. The Golden State Warriors even looked at trading for Damian Lillard before they got Chris Paul, and now there are reports that the Utah Jazz are even interested in getting Damian Lillard. And so I put together a trade package that could land Damian Lewitt in Utah. Whether or not this will happen, who knows. But I do like what I've seen in the Utah Jazz and how they've rebuilt over the last year or so. And I would say they're one of my favorite teams in the NBA besides the Los Angeles Clippers. I like the Sacramento Kings because De'Aaron Fox. I like the Celtics as well. My family, everyone's big Celtics fans. And growing up in Boston, I was a Celtics fan before I became a Clippers fan. And then you have the Utah Jazz, a team they're not a fan of because of their young core. And they've found ways to rebuild right. So I'm going to give you a breakdown of a trade package I put together to land Damian Lillard in Utah. So going to the Utah Jazz in this trade package is Damian Lillard. $45.6 million is his cap hit. So that means that Utah will be picking up $45.6 million in this deal. And then Portland will be receiving Colin Sexton, Jordan Clarkson, Lucas Semanic and Vernon Carey Jr., along with three first-round picks, a 2027 first-round pick of the Utah Jazz, a 2027 first-round pick of the Minnesota Timberwolves, and then a 2028 first-round pick from the Utah Jazz. So all in all, Portland would be receiving Colin Sexton, who's at just $17.3 million per year, Jordan Clarkson, who's at $14.2 million per year, Lucas Semanic, at just one year left on his deal, $2 million, and then Vernon Carey Jr. at one year, $1.9 million. And both of those guys, Semantic and Vernon Carey Jr., are both trade exceptions. And then also, Portland would be getting two first round picks from the Utah Jazz in 2027 and 2028, and the Minnesota Timberwolves' first round pick in 2027. So it'd be three first round picks and four players, two young players in Semantic and Vernon Carey Jr. Colin Sexton, a young point guard as well. And then Jordan Clarkson coming off a season where he averaged 20 points a game 
and Damian Lillard would be going to Utah. So it's one trade package I just put together for the fun of it. And then I put together another trade package with the Boston Celtics getting Damian Lillard. Put this together just for the fun of it. I have the Celtics sending Jalen Brown and Malcolm Brogdon in a 2027 first-round pick to the Portland Trailblazers. So all in all, Jalen Brown getting $31.8 million for this upcoming season. He is eligible for an extension. And one thing that's interesting with this situation is he's been eligible now for a week for his new extension, and he hasn't gotten it. So that shows that there's something going on behind the scenes between the Boston Celtics and Jalen Brown, whether it's them agreeing on money or there's even more to the situation. Maybe Jalen Brown, like I said, at some point, I think there is a chance he could potentially request a trade at some point out of Boston. That's what I predicted at one point maybe a month or so ago. I thought he'd maybe be unhappy with the way things have gone for the Celtics over the last couple of years, and a lot of people have wanted him out of Boston now, and the Celtics have put him in a lot of trade rumors, especially over the last four or five years now. He's been in every big trade rumor from Kawhi Leonard to Paul George to Jimmy Butler and to even Kevin Durant last summer. So I think Jalen Brown could request a trade at some point. So in this trade scenario here, the Celtics are getting rid of Jalen Brown with him requesting a trade. So I have Jalen Brown going to Portland and Malcolm Brogdon going to Portland. Malcolm Brogdon getting $22.5 million over this upcoming season. And then Jalen Brown getting 31.8. So the Portland Trailblazers are picking up $54.3 million in the process here in annual cap hit for this upcoming season. And then they're also getting a 2027 first-round pick from the Boston Celtics. And then the Celtics will be getting Damian Lillard back in return at $45.6 million. So this would leave the Celtics with the starting lineup of Damian Lillard at point guard, Derek White at shooting guard, Jason Tatum at small forward, Kristaps Porzingis at power forward, and then Robert Williams at center with Al Horford coming off the bench. That would be an interesting starting lineup and obviously would make the Celtics probably the favorite in the Eastern Conference to win. But as of now, I think the Celtics keep Jalen Brown. I think he gets himself an extension. But it is interesting, though, that the talks on both sides haven't come to an agreement yet and given him an extension like most players get typically on the first day when they're extension eligible. They typically get it. Jalen Brown hasn't yet, which shows me there's more than meets the eye there in that situation. So next up, James Harden still wants to be traded according to reports, but I think Daryl Morey and the Philadelphia 76ers front office ultimately are going to wait some time to see if they get a trade package that they like in return. They're not going to trade him just for a couple of bags of peanuts and a bag of chips back in return. They're going to want to get equal value that's going to help them compete for this upcoming season and maybe even for seasons to come as well, even though James Harden only has one year left at $35.6 million left on his contract and he's non-extension eligible. They're going to still want to get something back in return that's going to help them compete. So in this trade, I have them still trading James Harden to the Los Angeles Clippers. I have the Clippers getting P.J. Tucker in return as well. So the Clippers are picking up James Harden at $35.6 million, and then P.J. Tucker getting $11 million over the next two seasons. So that's $46.7 million going to the Los Angeles Clippers. And the Clippers are trading Norman Powell at $18 million for this upcoming season. Marcus Morris, an expiring contract, at $17.1 million for this upcoming season. Nick Batum, another expiring contract, at $11.7 million for this upcoming season. And then Amir Coffey, getting $3.6 million for the next two seasons, with the first-round pick going to the 76s in return as well, a 2027 first-round pick that is from the Clippers. So all in all, James Harden, P.J. Tucker to the Clippers, with Norman Powell, Marcus Morris Sr., Nick Batum, Amir Coffey, and a first-round pick, in 2027, going to the 76ers. So according to reports yesterday, the Clippers do not want to trade future draft picks and do not want to give up Terrence Mann in any deal to get James Harden. The Clippers want to give up expiring contracts in Robert Covington, Marcus Morris, and Nick Batum. And then obviously you'd have to add in a guy like Norman Powell as well, a guy that gave them 17 a game off the bench this last season. I would love to give James Harden a shot in L.A. I think this is the last run with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. So I see no problem with the Clippers going all in and trying to get James Harden and P.J. Tucker on the Clippers roster. This would be the Clippers with the roster of Russell Westbrook at the starting point guard position, James Harden at the shooting guard position, Paul George at the small forward position, Kawhi Lynn at the power forward position, and then Avica Zubats at the center position with the Clippers backups being Terrence Mann, Bowens Highland, Robert Covington, P.J. Tucker, Kobe Brown, and then Mason Plumlee, who the Clippers just signed on a one-year, $5 million team-friendly extension. So the Clippers got Plumlee back for less money. He got offered more money on the open market. He's coming back for just $5 million. 
when he was making $8 million on his last contract that he signed with Detroit. And then they also got Russell Westbrook back on a two-year $7.8 million deal at $3.9 million per season. So they got Plumlee and Russell Westbrook back for a combined $8.8 million on the cap. So the Clippers front office has found ways to get Mason Plumlee and Russell Westbrook back in a Clippers uniform for team-friendly deals, which is huge, which is huge. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with the James Harden situation. Hopefully the Clippers end up with James Harden, but as I said with recent reports, the 76ers are going to wait until they get an offer they like. They're still hopeful that they can try to figure out the situation with James Harden and try to keep him happy and keep him with Joel Embiid for another season. We'll see what happens there. And then in the Damian Lillard situation, according to reports, he's only going to play for the Miami Heat, and his agent is telling teams he's only going to play for Miami. So we'll see what happens. That will conclude this episode, though. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to this. As always, I appreciate it, and hope you guys have a good one. Thank you.